And now we're ready to move on to a oh, yes. very interesting, busy space. Yes. This is uh, this is supposed to represent the internet. And um, or my experience of the internet, I guess. So there are a lot of hands on one side and there's a lot of eyes on the other. So hands over there. Yep. And eyes over there. Because when you're on the internet, that's you're typing, so and you're moving the mouse, and it's your hands, and you're looking at the screen, but that's really the only parts of your body that are manifesting themselves on online, so that's why they're there. And then um, my experience of the internet has been that, you know, you, you have a lot of people and they're really obsessed with Japanese popular culture. Um, and, uh, and then, so I guess that these, these all represent different people in line and sort of different subcultural interests that they're into. And they're all worshipping this, this little person here who's, I don't know, male or female, and it's a tiny golden cow. Um, it's supposed to be like a, a dancer on the golden calf. Um, but um, I chose to make the, the golden calf uh, a little ambiguously gendered figure because there's sort of a disturbing trend to uh, sexualize uh, youth online. Sometimes it's a joke, but it's not always clear. So um, that was kind of a commentary on that. But it's a, it's a sort of hard wire kind of golden calf, Yes, right? yes. All sorts of circuitry and so forth. It's been built up by the internet. Right, right. It's great. It's just the... Which is... Which is a world of illusions, because the cake is a lie. Uh -huh. it, if you've played Portland, you'll understand why that's significant. Right. Now there's a, a figure here crouching yes. and looking at the uh, grandfather clock. Yes. Um, that, that figure actually my friend Nicole made for me. And um, the clock is, is a toy from when I was a little kid. And uh, I don't know if he's actually looking at the clock. His eyes are kind of directed up that way. But he's certainly leaning against the clock. So um, the clock is in there because, um, well, it's a sign of death, basically, because mm. death is always there. And um, you know, the clock is always counting down the hours. But this, is, this clock is static. This clock doesn't really move. So I don't know, sort of a paradoxical uh, feature to that. And, and uh, it's actually pretty, now that I think of it, pretty significant that that figure is leaning up there because one of the things that mm. my friend who made this for me and I used to talk about when we were younger is about um, the dual nature of reality and um, the way that, you know, everything is, is both itself and its opposite at the same time. So the time is both, is, it's eternal and it's, it's also Ephemeral. So, looking at this tableau, but really all of them, reminded of Susan Stewart's discussion of the micro cosmic, the miniature. Yes. Is that something that's had an impact on for you, or it's perhaps related to what we see here? Yeah. Um, I, I actually don't. Well, what? for example, one of the things that Stewart talks about is that miniature tableaus. At one level, they're silent, they're not moving, they're static. But paradoxically, because of the, the shrinking of scale, uh, they demand that we impose narrative on them, and that narrative sequences unexpectedly emerge, even in the static uh, 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 tableaus. And I'm wondering if that happens with these miniatures at all. I, I think it does. And I mean, even in this process of you questioning, you know, I hadn't necessarily thought about it. Um, what the narratives were, but when you when you focus on, especially when you focus on detail, I think then it kind of you know demands a, a narrative to be placed upon it because otherwise um, I think that there's an anxiety that crops up if it's just while it's there. It's like a lie. Um, another question I had perhaps related to this is uh, this is the only. Uh, one of the six cases in which you've chosen not to have a backdrop. 